Hey guys, my name is Massimo and about two weeks ago, I picked up something new. As you've seen at the title of this video, this is my new 2003 Porsche 911 Carrera 4S. So let's get right into the details of this thing. I'm super pumped to talk about it. Super stoked that I have this. And no, I did not sell the Mustang. There's still gonna be tons of Mustang content on this channel, but this is my new ride. So like I said, 2003 Carrera 4S, that means it had all of the styling that the 996 Turbo had but you don't have to deal with the maintenance of the turbos in the 996 Turbo Metzger engine. So that means that it has the rear wide body fenders, the turbo front bumper and rear bumper, the turbo side skirts, the turbo wheels, turbo brakes, and turbo suspension. I might be missing a few other bits there, but that's most of the cosmetic changes from the turbo body style. And then it is a four wheel drive, so it handles really well around corners. And as a refresh, if you don't know much about this car, it's a 3.6 liter flat six motor, and I have the six speed manual version. There's no Tiptronic for me. I have to go with the manual and I've been loving the car so far. So let's talk a little bit more about it and why I love possibly the most hated 911 generation. So with it having a 3.6 liter flat six, there's no turbo, it's just an NA motor. It's definitely by no means a fast car. It is a slow motor, but you'd be surprised how quick it is. It's not fast, but it is quick. The acceleration, it gets up there pretty quick. The gears are pretty short. So there's really no overdrive gear, fifth and sixth, you're on the highway. If you're cruising at like 80 miles an hour in sixth, you're gonna be at like 3,100 RPMs. You're definitely up there. So it's really torquey in all of the gears, but even the lower gears, like first, second, and third, they're super short. You're getting up to 60, 70 before you know it. But with the four wheel drive, I do feel like there's a little bit of understeer if you're really inside of a corner. With it being an NA motor, not having those turbos, you don't get that extra horsepower that I feel like this car almost needs for the four wheel drive. So if you're in a corner really hard, I found myself turning the steering wheel more than the actual wheels in the front were turning. There is a little bit of understeer, um, but it's nothing that's like crazy. I would just say my Mustang is set up so well now that like I noticed the understeer on this car from the factory. So it's just something to think about. If you're really gonna drive these cars in the corners, you're gonna have to get used to that or like that sort of thing. And it's honestly a car where like, if you're looking at this car, it feels exactly as you would think it feels to drive. It feels like a mid 2000s 911. There's nothing crazy about it. There's no bells and whistles on the interior or exterior. It's really just a pure driver's car. It's a get in, sit down and press that accelerator pedal down into a corner. It really handles well, I think. Now that being said, it is a comfortable daily driver. The seats, not so much. I'll get to that in a second. But for it being one of my daily drivers going between this and the Mustang, I think it's really comfortable. It's really nice just to sit in and go on your daily commute to work or school or whatever you're doing. That I really like it for. Now the seats, the seats are terrible. They are so uncomfortable. I hate these type of seats. I've been in these seats before or like these types of seats in other cars and I just, I don't like them. They feel very uncomfortable. The lumbar support I can't get used to and like other cars that I've had, I would suggest if you're gonna get this car and make it like a really good handling car, Throw some seats in it, throw some aftermarket seats, or even the 996 sport seats, find a set of those, throw them in this car, you'll do yourself wonders. But other than the seats, it's a comfortable daily driver. I know the seats are like a big thing in being a daily driver, but honestly, I really like this car for daily driving around. And it's funny, now that I'm so used to having a short shifter in the Mustang, this thing feels so long with the throws. I don't really think it's that long compared to other cars, but I'm used to a short shifter now. And the clutch engagement on this car, it's hydraulic assisted through the power steering. And so the clutch engagement is really low. And when you get to that top section, it kind of just like pops out at you. It's a bit of a weird clutch, you kind of have to get used to it. But overall, this, this car handles really well and the clutch and the shifter add to that experience. They definitely don't take it away. And the only thing I might do different is a CAE short shifter or something like that. But honestly, it's perfectly good stock and I have no complaints, but Let's move into another issue these cars are plagued with, the IMS bearing issue. If you know anything or have done any research on the 996s at all, you know what I'm talking about. The only 996 is not equipped with this type of engine is the 996 Turbo, GT2, and GT3 models. Those models were all equipped with something called the Metzger engine. But these engines, they do not have the Metzger engine. They're not quite as strong. They do have a failure point. It is called the IMS bearing, the intermediate shaft bearing. Basically what that is, it's a bearing that sits right past the transmission in the motor and it ends up failing from the factory. About 10% of these cars have the IMS bearing issue and it is a catastrophic motor issue, unfortunately, and you do have to get it switched out if you wanna be anywhere close to safe with your build or with your car. A lot of these cars, when people list them, the first thing they list is the fact that it got the IMS bearing replaced. And if you're looking to pick up one of these cars, 
it's something to think about for sure. Because the labor and the swap of this part, if you could bring it to a shop, which I highly suggest you should, costs about two to three thousand dollars. So if you're negotiating on price, it's definitely a negotiating factor. It's definitely no small amount. Um, and this one luckily had the IMS bearing swapped out. So I'm very happy about that. And a lot of them have at this point, a lot of the 996s have had the IMS bearing swapped out just because they're so old at this point. They're, this car's a 20 year old car almost. Now, like I said, there's really not that much to talk about on this car other than the things I've said, just because there's no bells and whistles. There's no crazy features about this car that I wanna tell you about. It's pretty simple. You see the exterior body lines, they're pretty simple, they're elegant, they're classy like a 911 always is. The interior, let's be honest, doesn't have a lot going on. The 996 interior is pretty ugly compared to the 997 and the 991 generation. And like I said, it's just a pure driver's car. You hop in and you drive it. There is not much else going on except for the fact that it is a good driver's car and it's super fun to drive. If you haven't been to the channel before, I do a lot of Mustang content. Contrary to this video, I have a 13 5.0 that I'm building for autocross and the track and just having a lot of fun with that car. And now we're adding this to the collection. So I'll definitely be doing some future videos on this car. And of course, keeping up with the Mustang content. So if you're interested in that, stay tuned to the channel, subscribe down below and hit that bell icon so you get all notifications for the channel. But I won't bore you with any more details, guys. Thank you very much for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.